In this video, we are going to cover the basics you need to know to start TIG welding. First, you will need a TIG welder. I suggest an AC-DC TIG welder with a pulse function. Connect your welder to your gas bottle. For most applications, you will need pure argon. There must be a reducer valve between your gas bottle and the hose that connects to your welder. Make sure your connection is airtight. Any gas leaks might affect your weld quality. Sharpen the tungsten electrode to a point. Assemble the TIG torch as shown in the video. Tungsten should slightly stick out from the gas cup. Connect the torch to the negative terminal. Connect your ground clamp to positive terminal. Plug your welder to electric grid and turn it on. Set up your gas flow to somewhere between 8 to 10 liters per minute, depending on your gas cup size. First, we will start with the basics. I will quickly explain what 2T and 4T stands for. In 2T mode, you will have to press and hold the trigger for as long as you need to weld, and when you release it, it will stop welding. In 4T mode, you only press the trigger to initiate the arc and then you can let go of it. The weld starts at the first press and it only finishes when you press the trigger the second time. Now let's get to know the difference between AC and DC TIG welding. DC stands for direct current, which means electricity flows only in one direction, from the TIG torch to your ground clamp. DC TIG welding is used mainly for carbon steel and stainless steel welding. AC stands for alternating current and you would need this for aluminium because the alternating current lifts off the oxide layer that is protecting aluminum. Now let's get back to DC TIG welding and I will explain the functions and parameters you will mostly use on your welder. Your main parameter is your welding current. For our demonstration purpose, we will set it up to 150 amps. Pre-flow and post-flow means how long the argon gas will flow before the arc is initiated or after the welding arc is turned off. Let me show you what I mean. I will set pre-flow to 3 seconds and post-flow to 3 seconds. When you press the trigger on the torch, it will first start flowing argon gas for 3 seconds before the arc starts a weld. Then when you release the trigger, it stops welding, but the argon gas will still be flowing for another 3 seconds. This is what prevents the oxidation of your tungsten electrode and your weld. Next parameters will be upslope and downslope. Upslope is how many seconds it will take from start current to your main current, which we set up earlier at 150 amps. First, I have to set up the start current at 25 amps, and then I set how many seconds it will need to increase to 150 amps. I will give it 4 seconds. Downslope is basically the same, just the opposite. I will also set it at 25 amps and 4 seconds, and this is how it looks. Let's make a proper weld this time. Clean the edges on both pieces, put them together and make two tack welds. These tack welds only hold the two pieces together so we can weld in between. Now we can also add filler wire to the weld. Hold your TIG torch slightly above the workpiece and place it at an angle as shown. You will be moving the torch in the direction of pushing it towards your filler wire. Start the arc. 
When you see a molten metal puddle, it means you are ready to move the torch forward, then slightly back and at the same time push the filler wire into the welding puddle. Do this for practice. Take a flat piece of steel and clean it. Draw straight lines with a center punch. Practice welding on these lines. Now let's use the pulse function. Pulse function is mainly used for thin sheet metal so we don't burn through the material which happens very easily. We will be using stainless steel for this test. Pulse function has three settings. Your pulse current in amps which is lower than your main current. Then you have frequency settings in hertz and the duration in percent. Let's set the pulse current at 90 amps, frequency at 1 hertz and duration at 50%. And this is how it should look. Now let's change the duration to 80% and this is how it looks. Now let's increase the frequency to 10 Hz and leave the duration back at 50%. We will now try AC TIG welding on aluminum. AC TIG welding has two additional parameters. AC frequency, which means how many times per second the polarity will change, and AC balance, which means how much of the waveform will be spent for cleaning action. If you are welding thin material, you should have higher AC frequency somewhere between 150 and 250 hertz. This gives you more accurate welding arc and you can have faster travel speed. If you are welding thicker materials you should use lower AC frequency somewhere from 80 to 120 hertz. Now let's look at a comparison. For next test we will leave the current at 100 amps and AC frequency at 120 Hz, but we will only change AC balance. The higher the AC balance the more it will clean the surface of the aluminum, but it will eat the tungsten electrode a little bit more. 
The lower the AC balance, the less it will clean the surface, which means dirtier welds. But the tungsten electrode will stay sharp. Now let's see a comparison between 20% AC balance, 35% AC balance, which is recommended the most, and 60% AC balance. As you can see, the best result is around 35% balance. Now let's make a weld on aluminium. Start welding and experiment with the settings yourself but I highly recommend you get advice and training from a professional certified welder. <laughs> 